Hello and welcome back to A Complete Denture Journey. Once again, this is for the New York City College of Technology, Department of Restorative Dentistry, Complete Dentures 1 course. This is instructional video 3 on custom tray fabrication in the laboratory. Once again, I'm Oscar Galvis. Let's begin. To begin, we must evaluate the preliminary impressions and the models poured from the preliminary impressions. Locate any areas for adjustments. Find any voids, bubbles, and anomalies that do not exist intraorally. These should be adjusted. If any borders are short in the preliminary cast, then any appliance made on this cast will be inaccurate. If we're looking to capture proper border lengths, then we need to do so by eliminating any voids that are on the preliminary cast. Once these areas have been designated with a pencil, you can adjust them with a carbide burr. If we are adjusting the depth of sulcus areas, we can use the contralateral side as a guide for how deep the border should be. Humans are bilaterally symmetrical. Usually, the depths of the sulcus on one side should equal the depths on the other. This is not true for everyone, but it happens to be that's a usual average. Once all necessary adjustments have been made, use a pencil to create a trace line for the borders of the custom tray. It will be helpful while trimming the custom tray material. The next step in custom tray fabrication is blocking out the undercuts. First, we'll define undercut. Undercut can be defined as the portion of the surface of an object that is below the height of contour in relationship to the path of placement. It can also be defined as the contour of a cross-sectional portion of a residual ridge or dental arch that prevents the insertion of a dental prosthesis. In this photo, we see a Murphy knife held up against the facial portion of the residual ridge on the maxillary cast. The space that exists underneath the residual ridge and between the knife and the cast is an undercut. The knife rests on the height of contour of the residual ridge, and the space that occurs underneath is your undercut. Designate all of your undercut areas. You can do so practicing the same technique seen in the photo previously. By holding a flat surface perpendicular to any height of contours in reference to the path of placement, any space that occurs underneath those areas are undercuts. Once the undercut areas have been designated with a pencil, we can now block out these undercut areas with base plate wax. It should be noted that undercuts are not necessarily a bad thing. In fabricating the complete denture itself, we look to undercuts to make sure the denture has retention in the mouth. However, in this instance, we are making a custom tray. Custom trays must be easily placed intraorally and retrieved. If undercuts were being engaged, the tray would have a difficult time capturing all anatomical structures without causing scraping of the impression material off of the tray. Once all undercuts have been blocked out, we can now apply our spacer. We do this by warming base plate wax, and it can be adapted over the model to act as a spacer for the custom tray. Once the spacer has been adapted to the model properly, you can trim the base plate wax at the custom tray border that was marked previously in pencil. If this is your first time working with base plate wax, and you may not have covered all anatomical areas necessary to fabricate the custom tray, have no fear. Remember that wax can always be added and removed. Once you have applied the spacer properly, seal the borders of the base plate wax to the cast. Be sure to expose any freenums that may be covered by the base plate wax spacer. 
When it comes to applying spacer on the mandibular cast, placing a cut into the base plate wax by the tongue space can make it easier for adaptation of the spacer without tearing the wax. The results from a correct application of spacer for a custom tray should appear as shown. The next step is creating tissue stops. In order to create tissue stops, you have to make small tripod formation holes in the wax, avoiding any mobile tissue, such as the incisive papilla. The reason we avoid this tissue is because we do not want to displace it during the impression taking process. Once the tissue stops have been made correctly, for easy cleanup, a tip is to apply petroleum jelly. It can aid in the wax removal after the custom tray has been fabricated. The next step is the custom tray material application. Be sure to adapt the custom tray material into the tissue stops first, and then take a large sheet of custom tray material and adapt it on top of the spacer. The custom tray material being used in this video is a light cure material used very commonly today in many removable labs. It should be noted that other methods include vacuum form and self-cure acrylic. Once the custom tray material has been properly adapted, you can then trim the tray material while it's still soft. Be sure to trim the material at the designated border that you traced earlier in pencil. While trimming the tray material, also do not forget to free the freedoms on the tray, just as you did in the spacer. It should be noted that freedoms are muscle attachments. They move with muscle movement, which means that the tray can impinge on these areas and give a false reading. It is important that these areas are freed within all appliances. The next step is fabricating the handle. Fabrication of the handle is typically at about a 45 degree angle. This is done to avoid the patient's lip. The handle facilitates the use of the custom tray and makes it easy for the clinician to take the impression and retrieve it once the impression is complete. When using the light cure material, it must be placed into a light curing unit for the soft material to now become a solid. Once the custom trays have been cured, remove the custom tray from the model. Flip the tray and cure the intaglio surface or the inside surface of the custom tray. This will ensure that the tray is cured through and through. Some curing units can produce a significant amount of heat, causing the wax to melt and make somewhat of a mess. For easy cleanup, you can put boil out solution in a pot and remove the residual wax from the custom trays and the casts. Once the trays are free of wax, you can begin trimming the borders of the custom tray. Borders of a custom tray should be about three millimeters short of the depth of the sulcus areas. It should be noted that although the Air Force Manual states specific measurements and techniques in fabricating a custom tray, much of this ends up being a matter of perspective and preferences with your clinicians. Some clinicians prefer handles with smaller inclinations, no spacer, or even shorter or longer borders. Lastly, mechanical retention can be placed into the custom tray by placing holes throughout the custom tray. This will provide retention for the impression material. Even with the use of an adhesive, it's a good idea to have extra retention for the impression material. Your final results should show your tissue stops within your intaglio surface of your custom tray, your retention holes, and your border should be smooth and the tray should be passive. You can clearly see a one millimeter even space throughout the custom tray. This is what the spacer and the tissue stops provide a uniform space for uniform impression thickness.